It is said that we know less about our own oceans than we do about outer space. And while humanity's dreams of touching the distant stars of our universe are presently very real, the quest to uncover the mysteries of the deep is perhaps for some far more interesting. There are thousands of satellites and instruments monitoring what happens in the skies above us, and yet we have still not sent equipment down to the deepest parts of our own oceans to see what could be down there. Perhaps that's why one sea monster is more enduring than all the others, and while the giants of various myth mythologies are taken fundamentally to be not true, we remain intrigued and terrified by the legend of the Kraken. The Kraken is said to be an enormous tentacle rearing monster, said to live on the ocean floor and surface only when it wants its prey. The stories still endure today, with people often claiming to have found evidence of it on Google Earth, and it remains a key figure in popular culture, capturing the imaginations of many. It is said to rise from the depths and drag sailors and whole ships down into the ocean, where they are never to be seen again. Again, and it struck fear into the hearts of many pirates and marinas alike. But they say there's a kernel of truth in every story. So what is the Kraken's kernel, and what is the legend's true origin? This beast was first described by the name Kraken, which comes from the Norwegian word meaning an unhealthy, twisted animal, and also led to modern German using the word Kraik to mean octopus. This name for it was first used by a Dane called Erik Pontopidan. Despite his high up position in the church as a bishop, Pontopidan was an avid believer in the myth of the Kraken and did quite a lot to further the legend and spread knowledge of it. He made such grand claims that the Kraken may even sometimes be mistaken for an island. Much like a different sea monster called the Aspidochelon, which is a whale or sea turtle of some kind so vast sailors would make landfall on its back before it would drag them into the water and drown them. The same creature is also alleged to be an allegory for the devil, which just goes to show how afraid people were of sea monsters and still are. Pontopidan was also first to describe the whirlpool also associated with the Kraken when it puts in an appearance which apparently occurs when the creature returns to the depths with such power that it drags the water with it and creates the anomaly. And of course, he wrote at length about its enormous tentacles it could use to crush entire enormous ships and everybody on board. Pontopidan's account of the Kraken dates back to 1752 at the earliest, but while this is the earliest reference we have to it under this specific name, there are other accounts going back as far as the 13th century describing a monster called Hafgufa, which directly translates from Old Icelandic to the phrase Sea Mist. It comes from an Icelandic saga, a type of poem called Ovrar Odir, in a passage about two sea monsters. One is the Hafgufka, the other is Ling which translates to Heatherback and is describing a large whale. For the Havgufa, however, the saga writes it is the hugest monster in the sea. It is the nature of this creature to swallow men and ships and even whales and everything else within reach. It stays submerged for days and then rears its head and nostrils above the surface and stays that way at least until the change of tide. The same monster, Havgufa, was described even further by the anonymous writer of an old Norwegian work of natural history, proposing that there are actually only two monsters which are incapable of reproduction, as their numbers never appear to increase. They also wrote that the monster is often mistaken for an island because of its incredible size. Remarkably, this isn't even the earliest reference. That can be attributed to King Sver of Norway in an ancient manuscript he wrote around 1180, 70 years before Over Odir and its contemporaries. But another key figure in the chronology of Kraken mythological developments is Carl Linnaeus, a Swedish botanist and zoologist who was the first to officially describe the monster as a cephalopod, that being the same type of animal as squid and octopuses. Linnaeus wrote about the Kraken in his book Sinister Nutriurae, which was published 20 years before Pontopidan was writing. He called it Microcosmus Marinus, and in a later work from 1746, still earlier than Pontopidan, called it Singulare Monstrum, meaning unique 
monster. These works, however, were supposed to be scientific textbooks classifying all known living organisms, and therefore the Kraken was eventually eliminated from subsequent editions, because of the fact nobody could ever prove for sure it existed. It's like having an entire episode of Planet Earth about the hunting patterns of Bigfoot. Linnaeus never claimed to have seen the creature himself, and all of the evidence surrounding it was purely circumstantial. Yet, as described by another Swede called Jacob Wallenberg in 1781, the Kraken has more historic ties to ancient sea monsters. In his description of it, he references the work of Pontopidan, the most influential figure in Kraken lore. Yet he also ends his account by asking, could one doubt that this is the Leviathan of Job? Anybody familiar with the Hebrew Bible will know that the Leviathan is a great sea monster, often described as being similar to whales or even dragons. In turn, this is a similar story to those of Thor slaying Jurmangandr, an enormous sea serpent who is the child of the giantess Angrambotha and Loki, as well as the ancient Egyptian legend of the sun god Horus and the evil snake god Apep. And if Horus defeats Apep, the sun will rise the next morning. Along with that, the equally old ancient Greek story of Odysseus, immortalised in Homer's epic poem The Odyssey, tells of Odysseus leading his ship through the horrors of the twin monsters Scylla and chattered this, with Scylla being the many-headed creature who lives in the side of a cliff and plucks sailors from the deck with her jaws, and chattered this being a thing so enormous its many-fanged mouth creates a deadly whirlpool, both ideas which endure long enough to become a part of the larger Kraken legend. The stories continue from the 18th into the 19th centuries, leaving the realm of taxonomic encyclopedias and entering that of fiction and stories meant to be stories. Monstrous squid are featured in the works of Jules Verne and Herman Melville most prominently, with the submarine Nautilus and the whaling ship Pequod being attacked by squid in 20,000 leagues under the sea and Moby Dick respectively. In Moby Dick, Ishmael, the novel's narrator, even references the writings of Eric Pontopidan when he says that there seems some ground to imagine that the great kraken may ultimately resolve itself into squid, meaning that already people were aware that the truth behind the Kraken stories was something far less sensational, in other words, giant squid, a species which had been known about since the Roman Empire was still at its height. A sonnet was even written by Alfred Tennyson, the poet laureate of Great Britain at the time, called the Kraken. It is this specific sonnet from 1830 which has later been cited as the inspiration, or part of the inspiration, behind H.P. Lovecraft's most famous cosmic deity, Cthulhu. Characterised as being an enormous monster with tentacles and an octopus-like head who resides in the sunken city of Rayleigh. Lovecraftian legend says that Cthulhu will one day rise and destroy mankind, though the Cthulhu figure specifically dates to 1928, and Lovecraft's short story, The Call of Cthulhu, rather than being a genuine monster of any legitimate folkloric tradition. But like Ishmael and the Romans already deduced, there is certainly a real world basis for the Kraken stories, those being accounts of the giant squid. Sailors' stories, however, like the great white shark's ancestor is the fearsome Megalodon, which many people believe is not actually extinct, there is evidence that there may be a prehistoric cephalopod of a similar nature to the Kraken. The evidence is in the form of ichthyosaur bones, an ichthyosaur being an enormous marine reptile. The bones lay out in the exact same way an octopus lays out the bones of its prey. Only it would have had to be a pretty big octopus to kill a monster fish that can grow to be 12 meters long. So it seems that they're entire ships. Though given what little we know of our own oceans, there's always the possibility that a great monster may someday emerge. Did you enjoy this video? Well, why not subscribe to the Factfile YouTube channel to keep up to date with all the latest content. We cover historic events, scientific breakthroughs, and more recently, intense conspiracy theories. And we release 10 videos a week, three long videos like this one, and seven daily shorter videos. If you want to help support Factfile in the making of more videos, then you can feel free to donate to the Factfile Patreon. Any donation more than $3 will get you into the exclusive Factfile Discord channel. Only donate if you can, but remember, 
If we get up to $50 a month on Patreon, we will start producing a fourth long video a week. Thanks for watching.